Welcome to Trade Happy. We are starting a new series today called the Trader Podcast. So sit back, grab a notepad and pen and take some notes. Uh, Today we've got a trader who started trading in 2013. Uh, He's also known as the Travelling Trader. He has a YouTube channel with over a thousand videos on. He's interviewed some of the top traders in the world. Please welcome Etienne, the founder of Desire to Trade. How are you, my friend? Good, awesome. What about you? Yeah, not too bad. So, for anyone that doesn't know who you are, uh, can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, so as you mentioned before, my name is Itzen Kret. I'm a Forex trader. I swing trade Forex since 2013 and full time since 2017. I host a podcast where I interview traders and I have been teaching people how to trade and eventually could do a job to have more freedom in life and trade for a living. That's really cool. So when you started in 2013, did you did you plan to have a YouTube channel? Did you like plan to interview traders or was that something that came on later? It all started with me trying to meet more traders and be around more traders. Hmm. And the way I did that was to go to, to try to find meetups in my area, so in Montreal, Canada. And I found one meetup and that meetup was like really huge for me because I learned a lot there into just one evening of, of a trader meetup. And so I had to find a way to be able to meet more traders. But of course, meeting people one-on-one in person is kind of hard sometimes. You have to, you have, to mm-hmm. have time, they have to be in the same city and everything. And there was a lot of people that I, was, that I was looking up to in other places. So the next idea I had to be able to achieve that was to start a podcast. So I began to reach out to traders, interview them on a podcast, try to kind of show myself with more, more people online. And that's how things started. And then of course, the next transition, the next like learning curve for me was YouTube. So it's one thing to do a podcast, you can share with people, but then I thought the YouTube channel would be a way for me to express my ideas better too, and for people to be able to learn on a bigger scale. Right, that was kind yeah, of yeah. later, of course. Um, so if I'm correct, you've interviewed around 180 traders. Um, you can correct me if that's wrong. Um, but were there any similarities that you found in the way that they trade um, that you applied to your own trading? Of course, most people trade a little bit differently, like they never trade exactly the same, yeah. but the core principles are very similar. So they all trade something, most of them trade something that makes sense in the market, like they don't just look at the moon and trade. They have a certain philosophy about it, they look at the zone, the market context, then they go down on like different things, technical setup or fundamentals, and then they go more and more in detail and then have some rules with that and then, then they trade. So that's all different, that's kind of similar. I learned this from my podcast and other people too. But I think the thing where it really like ties all together is where it's like the mindset. So most of them, they think the same way or fairly much the same way. They all have the same principle of like thinking thinking in terms of numbers, uh, looking at the bigger picture, doing their journaling, their analysis, everything of the sort. And they all run their business similar. They all have a way of doing things that like restructure, organize. And I think that's where I got the most in the podcast from like to, to traders. Mm. For the years. Um, was there one interview that actually stood out to you or that you've remembered for a good or bad reason? I pretty much all remember them. So there's not one that stands out the most. I think they're yeah. all interesting. They all have something to bring. Um, so yeah, they're all very interesting, in, in my opinion, at least. Yeah. Did you have like a, a mentor when you started trading and did you actually interview those once you started the YouTube channel? Not when I started, but as part of the meetup that I went to, I ended up meeting a guy that was working in a bank before, a trader in a bank. Yeah. I think Bank of Montreal. So he was training there and he got laid off and he accepted to coach me at some point. So he became my mentor or my coach for about three or four months. We still talk like even this day. So um, wow. he's been telling me a lot of things that I, I learned from him about like the market phase, the context. Uh, they set up different market tr- structures and everything, and psychology as well, which is something I learned a lot. So he was speaking only French. I interviewed him like a while, while, while back on my on uh, on my two channels just for fun. I uh, talk about different things, but it's in French, so uh, I've done that before. Uh, okay, okay. Um, obviously, you've done a lot of videos on YouTube, and you've interviewed a lot of traders. What would be the number one piece of advice that you would? kind of give to a new trader or a developing trader from all of those interviews? 
the number one is you gotta surround yourself with more traders. So the more you surround yourself with people that have the goal you wanna have, the closer you're getting to that goal, that's for sure. I found that just by, by me surrounding myself with people that make, let's say six figures trading per year, I would be getting closer to that goal. And then as I move forward, I surround myself with people that are at, the, at a higher level, of course, and that just helps to kind of grow. Now that's the first thing. The second thing is I think, given that you surround yourself with more people and you gotta learn from outside sources, you gotta spend a lot of time working on yourself and working on how you do things, um, what habits you have, what thoughts you have, working on your mindset of course, which is kind of cliche but works really well. And you gotta take some time to kind of do the, the work on yourself and on your trading, on your metrics. And has, that has to be done. So there's some work that to be done outside of your trading, but also inside like with yourself basically. Right, yeah. So leading on from that, what do you think is the number one reason people fail? Well, there's a lot of reasons people fail, but yeah. to summarize it all, I think they just don't treat trading like a business. They see things and they, they see it as a game or as a gamble or as a way to make money that, that doesn't require much work. And that's like a sexy idea, right? J don't do much work, just trade and you'll be making money. Well, yeah, but that's not how things work. So I, I think that's, that's the main thing. They don't see it as a business and they don't take it seriously. So if, if a new trader wasn't taking it seriously and... Um, maybe they weren't, they didn't have the business plan or the long-term mindset. What would you say to them to help them develop that long-term mindset and that business uh, brain for the markets? One thing that's interesting is you can talk to business owners and I learned a lot from like business books about, and then you can apply them to trading. So you read these books about mm -hmm. business, they can apply. Or you talk to business owners and they will tell you things that you think about it a little bit more and then you say, oh yeah, I can tweak the, I can for sure tweak this to trading. And that's something that's pretty really powerful. So there's been a lot of lessons that I got. And if you look at like all these processes in business, all the things that they do, they're not doing them just for fun. They're there for a reason. And as traders, we tend to forget doing them, but we have to do them. Like things like uh, R&D, so like research and development, you can work on that. Things like um, all the operation, the checklist that, that they have in businesses, in, in uh, mm -hmm. airlines or whatever. Those are things you can work on yourself. And all the aspect that you think that you don't like to do yourself, like taxes or whatever, you can outsource them. You can have people that work for you that do that. So I think that's yeah. something you can work on. And if you have the same diligence as the CEO in your trading, then you'll get results for sure, eventually. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Because um, I think a lot of new traders don't have that kind of business uh, almost like a business plan, I guess. They have the trading plan, but then they don't have the business plan to go along with that. Um, so I think that's really good. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's the business plan, but it's also the mindset, right? So yeah. most people that, that trade, they are what we could call like a like a, um, an employee that, that's there like on the front. But they forget that if they want to trade well, they have to take the mindset of a CEO. And, and the CEO is not going to complain because he has like three or four refund in a row while traders complain that they have three or four yeah. losses in a row. So you got to sit in a different perspective. And that's probably going to include seeing things on a higher scale, like looking at the results for like the month or the quarter and making a decision of that, not just like three or four trades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, did you have that business mindset and uh, plan when you came into trading to begin with? Or was that something that you had to develop? No, definitely had to develop. So I studied in uh, in business and in, in commerce at university, mm -hmm. and I had I had some businesses before that. Before that, I was I was doing websites, uh, creating websites for people, but mm -hmm. I didn't think I was applying any of that in trading when I started. So the first two years, I thought trading was different. Trading is a way is a thing where you can just trade and learn strategies and make money with it. Mm -hmm. But then over time, I learned that it didn't work that way. I had to kind of be more organized um, and apply all the things I learned sometimes in university, sometimes not, but things that I learned over time or things you read about businesses, I could apply them in trading really well. Right. Yeah. So the, the strategy that you're using now, was that the same strategy that you started with or is that something that's developed and changed over time? I'm looking for the setup with the bonk ben and trading those and it didn't work really well. And then I came to realize that from, from my mentor, from my coach back then, that I had to look at the market context. I had to have I had to have a bigger picture view of the market first for strategy to work well in the market. And so I applied that, then that worked better. And then I just mm -hmm. took it a little bit over time and did a lot of back tests on that, of course. And that's how it got, it got better and better over time. 
Right, yeah. So was there... Is there one trade that you remember? So, same really for the interview question earlier. Was there a trade that you remember, good or bad? All the good trades... So, for the past... uh, I would say the past, like, five years... For me, all the trades are fairly the same. They all, they're all like following the plan, or or maybe not, but they're all like small, like small wins, uh, much more small losses. So they're, they're pretty much all okay. Um, th- there's been some good trades from like news events, like the elections. I remember in 2000 and uh, I think 17, uh, the U.S. election. That's been a really good moment on the uh, USD and Mexican pesos. Um, so so these trades are, are always good because like they're in market context. Uh, there's been Brexit that's been pretty insane that I didn't really trade, but that was crazy to see. So those are things are interesting. I, I think the trades that I remember the most were the bad ones around like 2014 or 13. And these are trades where like I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like playing in the market, putting some money. I was yeah. buying, 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 even if things were going down. And it didn't, it didn't turn out too well. So I had this trade on the S&P 500, the index in um, Forex. And so I had this idea where with my first strategy of the Bank Japan, and I thought things would go well. So I just bought one trade, I entered one trade, then things go well. Tonight I was in the loss after. And price was going down and down and down. And I just kept adding trades because I knew that this was a good setup and that it would come back to being profitable. And it never came back profitable. So I had a margin call with that trade. And the broker sent me an email saying that if you don't close your trades or your positions right now, if you don't reduce your risk, we'll have to close your trades for you. and like like do a margin call and so I thought no it's gonna come back it's gonna come back it didn't have to do anything and if it is after then the, I just saw the margin call from the broker uh, all the positions were closed and I had like a, I think I like a 20% loss on my account in the store which was quite bad so obviously you had that difficult start was it a difficult process to become the consistent trader that you are now I wouldn't say difficult it's, it's all mm. the difficulty is in anticipating what you have to do so like you think oh I have to do a long back test and everything and then you feel bad and you feel difficult but when you're in it and you do things for me it wasn't that difficult it was just like the anticipation of things that was difficult and you think that things are going to be really hard and then find out that also if you, if you surround yourself with the right people it's not that difficult they give you ideas they give you tips and you just have to do it and then you get there so it's not that difficult uh, but you just have to put in the work yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so, if you had to start your trading journey again, uh, would you change anything? That's one, because that's one discussion I have with traders all the time, and especially with successful ones. Is it possible yeah. to avoid the the tough times and kind of shortcut your way to success in trading? And some people say yes, some people say no. I'm more in the opinion of no. It's really hard to get success if you didn't go through the tough times. Hmm. Like, how can you know what to do if you didn't experience the tough, the, the tough things, or the big losses, or the, the the big mistakes you make sometimes? So I think you got to go through those. Uh, one thing I would do is I would surround myself with traders maybe early or on, and that could have been helpful. Like going to meetups, meeting traders early on in my trading journey. Hmm. But even then, I could meet traders and still still do the same mistakes. So it's, it's something you got to go through, I think. Right. Yeah. So. For a beginner, straight, uh, beginner trader, do you think that there's a strategy that they should focus on or not focus on? Because um, obviously some strategies involve um, different aspects to trading, so maybe um, using cut analysis or sentiment, stuff like that, whereas something maybe like a moving average strategy is a bit more simple. Do you think that there's a strategy that a beginner should look at? It depends on your personality. So I think that traders, so usually when I work with traders, I work with people that have been in the market for at least one year. Yeah. That one year means that you've tried different things. You've been maybe to Fibonacci, you've tried moving averages, uh, you've tried some indicators and price action and everything around. So you get to know like things and, and then you can figure out what you know, what you don't know and what you don't want to trade with. So like you figure out that there's some things, some indicators that you don't understand really well. And, and people still try to, even though they don't, they don't get it and they, they, they're not good at it, they try to learn it. But that's the wrong way to do it. What you want to do is you want to find out what you relate with, what works for you, what you understand really well, then use that. 
So I think the best strategy you can do, and you can trade in the market, is the one that reflects what you know the most, what you're most comfortable with, and what you prefer to trade in the market. And that's it. So you gotta have like one year to try things out, go to different different indicators, different things, and then you put put, put in the sheet of paper what you know well, and what you want to use. You circle them, then you just use that for your strategy, and you try to build something from there. Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of actually developing the psychology that goes along with trading, do you think a trader needs to? I don't want to say blow an account, but do you think a trader needs to have a big loss to then develop that kind of mindset that a trader needs? Or do you think that a new trader could go straight from a demo and learning into that profitable trading? That's a tough question. I think that the thing is having a big loss won't give you the right mindset. That's not mm. going to happen. You see people that had big that, that blow up account, then they blow an account, then they blow another one, another one, another one, and they keep going, and they never stop. So it's not because you blow up an account that you will, that you will be successful. Um, the issue with these people is that they start to blow, they, like they blow their first account, and then their mindset, their, their way of thinking, how they see themselves, their self-image, is, oh, I'm an account blower, or I always blow account, I always fail at trading. So guess what, guess what happened after? They blow a second account. So until they kind of reframe that and they, they tweak their mindset around, they'll always do the same thing, they always fail. So that's not the issue for mindset. Like f for me, I've never blown up a full account completely. I've, I've been having some big losses, but I never blew up a full account. So mm. can you become profitable without blowing your, your account? Yeah. But I think the losses are, are part of it. You gotta make mistakes to be able to learn what not to do and what to be careful about. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, so like kind of going on from that, do you, do you think that traders should practice with live money um, or do you think that they should stick to the demo and then put however much they're comfortable with? Because obviously you can, you can still practice with live accounts, live capital um, and get that kind of emotion into the markets more than a demo. Um, so what, what's your kind of spin on demo versus live trading for practicing? I would say just do whatever you prefer. There's no rule there. And even if you tell people like go on a demo, then they're going to go on a live account and trade it. So you really got to go with what you feel is right for you. Yeah. The only thing is that you cannot like trade on your live account with small money and expect that you're going to make money and that you won't make money there. You got to come in with a mindset of expecting that you're just testing things and, and trying things out and maybe testing your ideas. And again, you gotta take the advantage of a CEO where if things fail, then you gotta, be, you gotta readjust and change things. But don't expect that you will make your money because it's really live or something. That was my biggest mistake at first, is I opened a demo account and I traded it for like a week <laughs> and then I went to a live account and I expected that I could make money, even though I was losing on my, on my demo account before. So that's something that you don't wanna do. You wanna have a perspective where you test things and you apply things to the market, you execute, and if things go well, then great. If they don't, then you reach us, like a CEO would do in a business. Yeah. yeah. So do you think that traders should uh, learn from more experienced traders to kind of fast track that learning process? So maybe doing courses or paying for some mentoring. Uh, do you think that's something that beginner traders should do? I would say yes. Um, one of the issues people have, especially beginning traders, is they tend to in my experience, what I've seen is they surround, they surround themselves with beginning traders, which is not good because they learn from people that are still making the same mistakes as them. Mm. So that, that doesn't help. Um, courses can be good. And the only issue with courses is that there's no support sometimes. So I remember myself buying some courses when I began trading or like a little bit later, but then I had some question. I tried to email the instructor and I didn't get any replies. So I understand like yeah, the, the price was off the course and everything, but it's still a point that you need some, and like in my opinion, you need some support to be able to implement things the proper way. Like you, always, you always gonna have questions. If you know everything is clear, you will mm -hmm. come up with, with questions all the time, and you need answers to those, to those questions, and you need some motivation, of course. So I think courses are, are are okay, but then the coaching is is better, or just some some support in some ways. Uh, you don't have to yeah. pay for a coach. You can find a coach for free. I've done I've done videos on that in the past. 
other traders that I interviewed and that, that I talked to and created a relationship with, I didn't pay anything. So that's the thing I would learn for free by reaching out to people. Uh, so it's, it's possible, but I, I think even in many connection, like a one-on-one -on -one connection is really helpful there. So do you think being part of like communities is good for beginner traders? Or do you think that they should join those bigger communities once they've actually got the foundation down? The thing is, if you join a community and you're not like good enough or you don't have the the right mindset yet, you, mm -hmm. you you'll get like super lost and you say, oh like this doesn't work for me. So I, I'm not sure about you, Jacob. Did you did you ever like try to read a book and then you don't understand anything about the book the first time you read it? And then you go yes. back like two years after, you read the same book, and then things start to click and you understand things well. Mm, yeah. The same thing with the community. So if you don't understand things, if you don't have the right mindset and you go there and then you're completely lost, then you'll quit. But if you come in with the right mindset or at least the right kind of way of seeing things and the right uh, terminology, knowledge, and everything around, it for sure it's going to be easier for you to be able to learn from, from the community. So that's why I say like one year at least, I, I think it's, it's a good time to experiment. After that, you can join and get more serious about it, I think. Mm, yeah. So kind of going back a little bit to your own trading and some advice for uh, not really beginner traders. Um, so obviously you've traveled a lot and you've traded. So what advice would you give to someone who wants to travel and trade? Traveling and trading is, is really fun. It's something that I love to do. Now I can't do it for obvious reasons, but yeah. eventually I'll, I'll get back to it. So I think you gotta, first of all, make sure that your training style is good for that aspect of traveling and trading. If you like spend your time from the chart at home and you wanna travel, then it's not gonna work. So you gotta adapt your training style. You gotta kind of learn strategies that don't require that much time in front of the chart. Kind of like the set and forget strategy or, or uh, some strategy that involves less time in front of the chart. And that's definitely possible. A lot of people do it. And, and from there, what I found is that even though you do that, like that's what I did when I first started trading and traveling, there's the issue where you want to do things, you want to go outside, you want to travel, you want to take planes and everything. But then if you have to look at your charts during the day, or even once in the morning, it became kind of a struggle. Mm -hmm. So what helped me the most there was automation. Automating things, creating algos, and uh, for me, began with like alerts. Alerts were okay. Then began to uh, coding my setup into a notification on my phone with all the parameters from my trade. That worked fine, better than the other one before. And then now I went to like trading with algos. So coding my strategies, having the algo take trades for me, and that just saves a lot of time, make it much easier. So when you started traveling and trading, did you have to change your strategy at all so that you could travel and trade? Like, did you? and any difficulties when you first started traveling? Yeah, so I got this the hard way. So I had basically, uh, back when I was home, I had two strategies. I had mm. the swing trading strategy with the Wong Shaban, then the day trading one for the Asian session. I thought, well, I'll just do the same when I travel. And then I went to travel, I, I flew to Shanghai the first time. And I tried it the first week and it, it just didn't work. Cause like you're traveling, you want to do things, you want to go outside. But then I just spent like four hours from, from my chart day trading the Asian session in the morning. And four hours, like from let's say from eight to twelve, like you have a lot of time to waste there. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to do something in the morning, you cannot. And I had other things to do. I had like a video, other things to do. I was doing some vlogs back then, so that's something that I, I had a re really hard time to combine. So I dropped the day trading about like a week after because I just couldn't do it, <laughs> and I focused more on swing trading. So I didn't really change my style, but I changed my like I, I just drop off one of the uh, training style I have basically. Mm, yeah. So. Do you have like any routines that you do to help with the actual traveling and trading? In terms of what exactly? In terms of um, so, trading better or? Yeah, in terms of trading better, staying uh, relaxed, because obviously traveling for some people can be quite stressful. Um, so like, do you have any tips on how to stay mentally sound when traveling and trading? Okay. Uh, yeah, I definitely like that. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing is you gotta do it over and over again. Like traveling is stressful when you do it like once a year or like two times a year or something. If you do it often, it becomes like really routine. It becomes really, something really simple, so that that you don't worry about too much. So my first trip, I, I was like more and more uh, stressed for sure. 
but that's something that goes, that goes over time. So the other thing is, I try to dedicate my morning, like the first hour and a half of my morning, to trading and to like looking at the charts, um, placing the zones, making sure everything is right, looking at my trades the past day, all that stuff related to trading. Because I found that if I wait too long that day, something might come up. Like I, I could be like invited for, for like a trip somewhere, I could be doing something else, I could be in a boat or a plane somewhere else. And so that's something that you want to do you first thing in the morning if you can, or maybe even at night for some people. And that means that you've done it and then you're good for the day after that. So I find that really helps. And the other thing is, of course, meditation, which is something that I still do now. And that really helps to stay calm. And I would say the last thing is journaling. So that's really helpful. Yeah, I think journaling is something that a lot of newer traders especially struggle with because they don't see the benefit of journaling. Yeah, but that's all about the, the way you do it. If you do it in a way where you track things and you just not down your trades, then that's kind of pointless for any trader. So you got to find a way where you, every day, find something that worked well for your day, something that didn't go well, and then how you can improve that. And if you do that and focus the next day on trying to improve that thing you mentioned the day before, then you're sure to improve and then you'll, find, you'll start to feel better about journaling. And then you'll be able to do it over and over again. Yeah, so kind of going on from the routines, um, what do you think could make a trader's life easier? Because um, obviously having the routines kind of helps to get in the motion of trading. Um, is there anything else that you think could make a trader's life easier? So here's I think the best thing. Uh, people talk about like trading strategies all the time and that's good, but how about creating systems for your trading? And we don't mean like just your, your actual trading, placing trades, but how about everything around? Like uh, creating a system for when you're doing meditation, like kind of like a, a checklist or step-by-step -step process that you do every day to ensure that you have your best day ever, every single day. So that's something yeah. I've been working on a lot, like the past about three months or so, uh, especially being in Bangkok for and being stuck here pretty much. So there's a way where you, if you structure your day right and the right things come come after the other ones, then your day is going to be really good and, and much better. And the reason people lack motivation sometimes and like discipline is because they do things in the wrong order. Like they trade after they've been with friend or something, or they trade after uh, they had a crappy call or whatever. So if you do the right things in the right order, chances are that your result will be much better. So I think it's the best thing to create a system for yourself on a day-to-day, -day, what you do when. And of course you want to leave some time for like improvisation and, and things that you do that, that are fun and everything, otherwise it's going to be boring. You don't like script like every minute. But it's leave some time for you for you to be able to be, to enjoy the city you're in or whatever, and but having some things that you got to do every day, and just doing them one after the other. Yeah, I, I like that actually creating the system to map out the perfect day. That's that's really good, um, and I'm sure that a lot of traders don't do that. For sure, no. So we're kind of going to go off the kind of subject of uh, routines and. Uh, how we can help traders but in terms of because obviously you've got a course and would you be able to like tell us about your course um, and the, the different courses that you offer yeah so my goal is not to be to sell course at all uh, my goal is to be able to help people and the way we do this is through a program so we call it the desire trade academy it's a program that includes a lot of courses that you need to be able to make a living trading and tra tra trade profitably. So I want people to be able to kind of learn on their own and not have to follow like 10 different websites to find information about 10 different things. So I want to have a place where they can learn everything in, at the same place. So that's the goal with this. And at the same time, we want to make sure we support people. So we have mastermind calls that we do every two weeks. These are group calls where you can meet other traders, you can ask your questions, and you can share whatever you're struggling with, and people get back to you and give you tips on how to proceed and how to move forward. We found that people that go to these calls and like get really, really good results with, with those calls. Mm. They get accountability and they are able to um, get help from other people and meet other traders at the same time. So that's one thing. So we do that and then we support people every day by doing calls with them and stuff and helping them out. So it's kind of like a big family and we are making sure that people are, are, are on the right track and achieving their, their goal uh, step by step. That's nice. So how many people are in the program? We have about uh, close to 200 people now. They're not all active, yeah. some people are already profitable and they already reached their goals, some people are not and they just joined. So 
want to be able to have people at every level. Well, that's that's really good. Um, so have you got like any plans to expand in the future? Have you got like any ideas that you're thinking about for desire to trade? Yeah, my goal is to be able to simplify things for people and to be able to have them achieve their goals the fastest way possible without too much pain, as we talked about before. Mm. So right now, I'm working a lot on algos. Um, I created this algo like about a year ago, thanks to Alejandro, who is one of my students and decided to work with me over time. So he's coding the algo for me. But that's something that I want to improve, I want to work on. And I know there's some ways we can make things better with the algo. And we can maybe have ways that people trade it more, more easily for them. So we're working on that now. And it's just about like getting more impact, making sure that people are, are happy and moving forward the fastest way possible. And that we kind of create a big system where if you follow that system, then you're going to be able to reach your goals and trade full time and quit your job eventually. So that's the goal. Cool. That's really good. Where can people find you? Well, I'm happy for you all to reach out to me. And we have a support mm. team that's going to be able to answer the questions if they're simple. If they want to get in touch with me, social media, I think, is the best way. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, uh, pretty much everywhere. You can just search for Desire to Trade online. You'll find me easily. And as long as people come in with like a, an approach of wanting some help but not requesting anything, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to give them some time and making sure that they get what they need to be able to move forward. Okay, cool. Thank you for coming on and chatting with me today. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Awesome, my pleasure, of course, and congrats for, for what you're doing with the podcast. It's awesome. I hope you'll be able to help more people and and help them to uh, get to their visions over time.